Yo, what is going on guys? Welcome back to another video and today I've woken up to a very pleasant surprise as I logged on to Instagram this morning and saw that Thought Park have announced their returning maze list for this year's Fright Nights. So today I'm just going to go in an in-depth review and, you know, have a look at what mazes are returning, what mazes aren't returning and also how many new spots we could potentially be seeing new amazing attractions for. So definitely stay tuned for that. Also, from now on I will have at least one Fright Nights video a week to get it all hyped up. Next week is going to be another Creekwood Sawmill construction update as well as some other stuff. So definitely get excited for that and without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, so first we're going to get into what mazes aren't returning as we know of. So obviously there's been a whole controversial thing around Sora Alive, whether or not it's going to return or not. Obviously had its signs taken down as well as the painting on the actual boat itself. And now we can officially confirm that Sora Alive in its current state that it was will not be returning this year. That's right, it's not on the returning maze list at all, which does lead me to believe either it will come back in a new incarnation, such as what Do or Die had, Either that or it's just completely gone this year and we could potentially be saying goodbye to it for forever. Also, another important key thing I noticed was that Big Top Showtime is not on that list, which could potentially mean that one of the three new mazes could potentially be Big Top. Now, obviously, it's done what Big Top was. It was a maze that started off quite small and gradually got better and better. And we saw the removal of it last year and the implement of a show that was taking place in the dome. And that show is now not on the list. Could potentially mean that it's coming, possibly. Uh, but we don't know. Obviously, the place where it rested last year, or not last year, the last year it was at the park, is obviously where Bouncer is right now. So whether or not they take down Bouncer are quick enough to put it up is a different story. But we'll get into potential places that could be in a different video because I feel like that's a whole topic for itself. So they're the two key ones that I'm returning. Obviously, we've see, not seen the return of Vulcan Peak this year, which isn't too disappointing. Obviously, it was a hooded maze last year. It wasn't exactly the greatest. But hopefully, in a couple of years' time, they'll be able to bring that right back into a you know more enjoyable state than it was because, obviously, I think they learnt from their mistakes knowing that it wasn't a great attraction, as well as the fact we've got Jungle Escape in that building at the moment, so it'd be a bit difficult for them to set it up. Um, so as far as the big ones, that's basically it. We've got mainly other ones that were there last year. Obviously, we've still got the Walking Dead mazes, but that's what we're going to get into right now. Okay, so the first maze we're going to look at is the one that quite caught me off guard and quite surprised me. Now, this is Platform 15. Now, if you don't know what Platform 15 is, it's a maze themed around an old abandoned like train wreck sort of thing that had like a haunted backstory with it, with a bride and a groom getting like dumped in a tar lake. It's pretty weird, but go and check out POV if you want to learn a bit more about that. But there was a lot of like sort of questioning whether or not this would return, because obviously we've got the construction of the Logger's Leap. We've got possibly Creekwood Sawmill coming there. And obviously, Platform 15 sat just next to that. So people were thinking, is this going to take a different route? What's going to go on? So whether or not Platform will be in the same place it was last year is a different story. But now we have official confirmation that it will be back and it is still here. It's not gone. They've obviously trying to cling on to this because obviously it is one of the best mazes at the park. It was probably the best maze last year, thinking about it. So it is very exciting that we've had some confirmation that the Platform will definitely be returning. Okay, so this next maze didn't surprise me as much, which is Do or Die. Now, obviously, if you went to Fright Nights last year, you know that Do or Die was probably one of the stronger mazes there. It was quite hyped up, obviously. It was a new incarnation of Sanctum, which came out the year before, and it was pretty well received. It was a pretty good maze. It was probably one of my favourites at the park that year, and also was up there close with Platform 15 as well, which... It's very surprising, but so I, so I can easily see why this is returning. Obviously, Thought Park want to make the best mazes and want the guests to enjoy their time at Fright Night. So I was not surprised at all when I saw this on the list. Obviously, they still do have the rights to The Walking Dead, which is another reason why I probably saw this coming back. So until then, I feel like Walking Dead, Living Nightmare, and Do or Die will stick until that contract ends, or until they feel like they're. Park has like ended because obviously at some point there people will get a bit bored of these mazes and be like oh I saw that last year I'm probably not going to go on it this year and then slowly they'll deteriorate into a state where not that many people go on it but as it stands right now I'm quite happy to go on this again I really did enjoy it last year and it is another good addition to the lineup. Okay, so following on from the Walking Dead Do or Die, we have Walking Dead Living Nightmare. Now, it's another really strong maze. Obviously, this came out a couple of uh, years ago and uh, was open for the summer just a bit last year. And it was really enjoyable. I love this maze. Obviously, the fact that it's, you know, inside is a lot better because we need some more indoor mazes at the park, really. I feel like they're the stronger ones. But obviously, this is more theming, uh, central-based, which is 
fine by me. I'm, I'm a sucker for theming. And uh, also, it's very scary and enjoyable ride. Obviously, you've got some nice narrow corridors, some cattle pen fences, and even you go onto a bus at one point. So, it is very enjoyable ride. I definitely did enjoy it last year, and I'll definitely enjoy it this year. There's not really much to say about it, really, other than that it's Walking Dead uh, living nightmare. I mean, it did particularly stay the same last year, so I'm assuming it's going to keep the same layout this year. I don't know, but we haven't really seen too much work going on uh, around the uh, maze itself. The only thing we've already got a hint to is a sign outside saying it will return to Friday night. So once again, this wasn't really a maze I was surprised to see. But it doesn't mean to say it's not a right uh, ride I'm not really excited to go on. So I can't wait to get back on Living Nightmare and also do or die. But that sort of ends it for the Walking Dead mazes now. Whether or not we'll get new Walking Dead mazes or not is a different story. But uh, I'm quite happy with these two. Okay, so the next maze I'm going to talk about is one that I am particularly excited about, particularly because we've got some work going on. Now, this is Blair Witch. Now, this is obviously sort of, uh, sort of a maze that I knew would probably come back in my gut, but there was that sort of feeling that I thought, oh, possibly it could just be another another IP going in there. But no, it's Blair Witch again. Obviously, if you went on Nemesis Inferno, you'll see that most of the theming is still there. You've still got the crawl section, you've still got the shed. Uh, but the one thing that was missing was that Blair Witch sort of stick figure, which was quite, you know, teased last year. It had it hanging from the trees. But obviously this year it wasn't as sort of out there, which made me to believe that it could be a new IP. But no, we got Blair Witch again, which is extremely fun by me. I did really like the maze last time, uh, especially in the dark, which is probably the only time it opens, really, cause, which is understandable. Um, but like I said, this maze layout is sort of staying the same. But the reason why I'm excited about this in particular is we've seen some new sort of changes around the area. Obviously, if you've seen Jack Silverstone's recent video when he walked down Monk's Walk, you'll see that the layout for this maze has been like, put out in these sort of string fences, which is really interesting. We could be seeing a completely new layout for this, which is really good because I feel like Blair it worked last year, it wasn't the worst maze there, but it also wasn't the best. But you know, I'm happy for it to return for another year. Hopefully, I'll do some more improvements, and uh, yeah, that's basically it for Blair Witch. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to talk about isn't particularly a scare maze, but it is containment. Now, if you've never been on containment before, it is basically an escape room that has live actors in there, which makes gives you a little bit more of an edge. So, you know, I didn't really get to ride uh, containment last year, but hopefully, I might do it this year, depends on whether I feel like it. But um, obviously, like I said, it isn't particularly a scare maze, but it is another ride that we knew would come back, mainly because it did have a sign outside, like I said, saying it would return for Fright Nights. Um, but it doesn't mean to say that it isn't exciting. Obviously, the escape room is sort of a running theme this year, obviously with Jungle Escape. So I can see possibly me going on this year, maybe paying for it. Obviously, you do have to buy an extra ticket, which is the part that sort of leaves me on the bench a bit. But after doing Jungle Escape, I feel like I'm really in the mood for an escape room that's particularly a scary one. So I feel like this could be a really good... Uh, thing to do, especially if you like waiting on some stuff and you just thought, right, let's just do a escape room, because obviously it is something different, obviously if you're doing scare mazes the whole night, it's just going to get a bit boring, so if you did something like containment, it'd probably shake it up a bit and, you know, allow you to have a bit more of a more enjoyable time, so uh, yeah, hopefully I will ride containment this year, like I said, it's not definite, but if I do, you'll definitely be hearing from it, because uh, knowing me, I'll probably do a full fledged review on it, so on to the next thing, which I do believe is the last thing, so uh, yeah, let's get into that. Okay, I think this is the last thing, if, if obviously if not then you'll see another bit after this, but this is Screenplex Cinema. Now I didn't get to do this last year because, you know, I was out doing mazes and stuff, but this is basically a cinema short film sort of thing that is situated in the Angry Birds 4D cinema, uh, which is just like some you know, horror short films playing with a little bit of a twist, I'm pretty sure some actors come out, and you know, the seats obviously still move, you know, have the effects on that. So, to be quite honest, I might do this this year, but like I said, I'm not usually doing as many mazes as I can, but I'm hopefully going to visit Fright Nights a couple of times this year, so hopefully one of them times I'll do this, just to, you know, experience it and see what it's like, because I've never really done anything like it. But, you know, I'm still excited, obviously. This was one that sort of wasn't really that popular last year, but I can still see why they brought it back, you know. Like I said, it's another thing to just mix the night up a bit. If you're just doing scare mazes the whole time, like I said, it'll get a bit boring. So if you do something like this, it'll, you know... You know, change it up a bit, which, which is nothing bad, obviously, there's nothing good with, there's nothing bad with, like, a little bit of change. So, to be quite honest, this is something I am really, really excited for, because, uh, like I said, I didn't got to do it last year, so hopefully I'll do it this year, and hopefully it is very good. 
Okay, so the last thing I'm going to talk about in this video is the new Scare Mages slash attractions. Now, you might be thinking they haven't announced them yet, which will be right about. Hopefully, they'll announce them soon, obviously, because we've got these now. Hopefully, it will be extremely soon where we start to learn when these are coming. Um, but we do have confirmation on how many new things there will be. Now, there will be three new Scare Mages slash attractions. Obviously, I'm saying one of them will at least be Creekwood Sawmill, and possibly another being something else. Obviously, that's three is pretty quite a lot you know he's, he's thinking of like what work we've been seeing going around uh obviously we've only really been seeing creekwood sawmill being constructed but obviously there's room for two more mazes which could mean construction will be starting soon possibly one of them mazes being big top hopefully like i said i'll probably have a different video on that and then one mystery one we don't exactly know what that'll be which is really exciting and obviously that's not a bad thing that they haven't announced them all at the moment because obviously it gets you more excited for the initial reveal um so yeah, this is quite early when you think about it for Fright Nights. I know like it's starting a little bit earlier this year, but usually this comes out when I'm at school. Obviously I'm at the summer holidays at the moment. So um, hopefully, fingers crossed, we'll get the proper maze announcements during the summer holidays so I can get the video out to you guys as soon as possible. But if not, then hey, I hope we can just get it out as soon as we can. But that is it for today's video, guys. Hopefully you did enjoy it. Like I said, subscribe if you do enjoy the video because I will have more Fright Nights videos out pretty soon. And also, Scarefest, I might touch on a little bit if they announce some stuff for that. Um, I'm not particularly going to Scarefest this year because I'm going to Orton Towers in the summer. But uh, I will definitely touch upon it because I know quite a lot of you go to Orton Towers who watch my channel. So uh, it's definitely something I will talk about. But without further ado, I'll see you guys later.